Hi there, in this video I'm going to go through random logarithm questions. So I have a selection of logarithm questions. So here's example 1 part A. So we need to solve this equation 2 to the power 2x plus 1 and that is equal to 3 to the power 3x minus 1. So back to the paper and pen. Now to solve an equation like this I'm going to take logarithms on both sides. So that's the approach that I'm going to be using in order to solve an equation of this type. Now it's up to you. So you can take log to the base 10 on both sides or you can take ln's on both sides. ln means natural logarithm. So ln means log to the base e which is called the natural logarithm or you can take log to the base 10 or log on both sides so log means log to the base of 10 some people also use lg lg also means log to the base 10 so the reason why i'm focusing on ln or log when i take logs on both sides is purely because on your calculator you have functions for log, log in the calculator means log to the base of 10 and ln, ln means log to the base of 8. I'm going to take natural logs on both sides so I'm going to use ln. So in the first step, step number one, so by taking natural logarithms, so natural logs on both sides. So in this case taking natural logs on both sides means I need to write an ln in front of the left hand term so the left hand term is 2 to the power 2x plus 1 and I also write an ln in front of the right hand term so the right hand term is 3 to the power 3x minus 1. If you wanted to take uh, logs on both sides or log to the base 10 on both sides the approach is similar so you need to write log in front of the left hand term 2 to the power 2x plus 1 and you need to write log in front of the right hand term 3 to the power 3x minus 1 so as I say it doesn't matter whether you take ln's or logs on both sides the solution should be the same so let's continue so that is step number one. Now in step number two, step number two is to use the power rule of logarithms. So in one of the videos that I did on logarithms, so I'll provide a link to that video in the description below. So I went through the power rule. So let me note down the power rule. So if you have log of b to the n to the base of a, that is the same as n log b to the base of a. So that is known as the power rule. So in this case, I'm going to apply the power rule on both sides of this equation. So before I apply the power rule, I would say it's wise to encase the powers in brackets before applying the power rule. So on the left hand side, if I apply this power rule, I'll have 2x plus 1 ln 2 and that's equal to application of this rule on the right is 3x minus 1 ln 3. If you were taking logs on both sides step number two will be similar you need to use the power rule on both sides of this equation. So back to this example now I'm going to expand brackets so 2x times ln 2 is 2 ln 2x plus so plus 1 times ln2 is 1 ln2 or simply ln2 that is equal to 3x times ln3 is 3 ln3x minus so minus 1 into ln3 is 1 ln3 or simply ln3 now from here on I'm going to rearrange I'm going to take my x terms to the left hand side and take the remaining terms to the right so I'm going to move this x term to the left and this term to the right to give me 2 ln 2x which is currently on the left. If I move this term to the left 
I'll have minus 3 ln 3x that is equal to on the right I've got minus ln 3 and if I carry the ln 2 term to the right minus ln 2 so now I'm going to take out a common factor of x from the left to leave me with 2 ln 2 minus 3 ln 3 and that in turn is equal to the minus ln 3 minus ln 2 on the right hand side and if I rearrange for x x will therefore be the minus ln 3 minus ln 2 divided by 2 ln 2 minus 3 ln 3 so this should be the solution involving ln and if you use the ln button on your calculator so here's the ln button it's usually beside the log button in order to work this out so I worked it out to three significant figures so it should be 0 0.938 correct to three significant figures so this should be the solution to part A so if we go back to the screenshot we have another example so we're going to be solving this in the same manner 4 to the power 3x minus 2 that is equal to 7 to the power x plus 1 so why don't you have a go at this problem so follow the method that I explained and used in example 1 part A and I'll give you the solution to part B so that you can check your answer So here's example two. So example two, part A, is to solve the following equation. And the equation reads two to the power two x minus three into two to the x minus four, and that is equal to zero. So let me show you how to solve an equation such as this. So back to the paper and pen. So what I'm gonna do first of all is, I'm going to write two to the power two x in terms of 2 to the power x. So as a side calculation, I'm going to write 2 to the power 2x in terms of 2 to the power of x. 2 to the power 2x is the same as 2 to the power of x squared. So remember one of the rules in indices, if you have x to the power ab, that is the same as x to the a to the power b. So this is the very rule that I'm applying in order to rewrite 2 to the power 2x as 2 to the power of x. So with this being said, I can rewrite this equation as 2 to the power 2x is the same as 2 to the x squared minus 3 into 2 to the power of x minus 4 and that is equal to 0 on the right. Now, in the next step, I'm going to try and form a quadratic. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let y equal 2 to the x. So if I let y equal 2 to the x, I can form the following quadratic in terms of y. So if I replace 2 to the x terms by y, I'm going to have y squared minus the 3, 2 to the x, which is y, minus the 4 and that's equal to 0 on the right hand side so as you can see now I have a quadratic so I can factorize this quadratic so if I factorize the left hand side the factors being y minus 4 y plus 1 which is equal to 0 which in turn gives me two values of y so either y minus 4 is equal to 0 which means that y is equal to 4 or y plus 1 is equal to 0 which means y is minus 1 so I've got two values of y in this case so to work out the x values let's go to this substitution so let's refer to so since y is 2 to the power of x 
So let's calculate x first of all when y is 4. So when y is equal to 4. So I'm going to replace y by 4 here. I'm going to have 2 to the power of x is equal to 4. Now 4 is the same as 2 to the power 2. And remember in the video that I did on indices, if the bases are the same on both sides, so I've got a base of 2 on both sides, all you do is equate the powers. So since I've got a base of 2 on both sides, let's equate the powers to give us x is equal to 2. So that is your solution for x for the y value of 4. Now let's deal with y is equal to minus 1. So when y is equal to minus 1, if I replace y by minus 1 here, I'm going to have 2 to the x is equal to minus 1. And this equation cannot be solved. Okay, so I'm going to put a cross beside this equation. Even if you're thinking about taking logs on both sides, so the approach that I've used in example 1, log or ln of a negative number doesn't exist. So this equation cannot be solved. So all in all, you've got one solution for example 2 part A. The solution is x is equal to 2. Now I have another example. So a part B. So for part B, try and have a go at this example and I'll give you the solution to this problem so that you can double check your answer. So I have an example three. So example three reads solve. So I have two equations, log of y to the base of x is equal to two, and y minus three x plus two is equal to zero. So let's see how this is done. So back to the paper and pen. Now I have one of my equations. So one of my equations is in logarithmic form. So this equation, equation number one, is in logarithmic form. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write this equation in index form. And to write it in index form, remember this result. If b is a to the c, c is log b to the base of a. So I'm going to use this very result in order to rewrite the equation in logarithmic form in index form. So... In this relation, this is the log form part, and this is the index form part. So, if I make a comparison of the equation in logarithmic form with this part of the relation, which is also in logarithmic form, we note that the a term is x, so a is x, b in this case is y, so b is y. How about c? c is 2. So c is equal to 2. So if I replace a, b and c into the index form part of the relation, I'm going to have b, which is y. That is equal to a, which is x, to the power of c being 2. So I'm going to call that equation number 1. So I've got a second equation. So the second equation is y minus 3x plus 2. That is equal to 0. Let's call that equation 2. So as you can see, I've got a pair of equations to solve. So I'm going to solve these two simultaneously. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put y equals x squared straight into equation 2. So put y is equal to x squared into equation number two. So if I put it into equation two, y is x squared minus three x plus the two. And that is equal to zero on the right. So I'm going to have a quadratic x squared minus three x plus two is equal to zero to solve. Okay. 
Now, I can factorize the left-hand side, or you could just as well use the quadratic formula. So if I factorize the left-hand side, the two factors are x minus 2 and x minus 1. And from here on, I've got two values of x. So either x minus 2 is 0, which means that x is 2. So that's the first solution for x. Or x minus 1 is equal to 0, which means x is equal to 1. So I've got two solutions for x in this case. So we need to work out the corresponding y's. I'm going to put the x values into equation 1, say. So put x values into equation number 1. So equation 1 is y is equal to x squared. So let's first calculate the corresponding y for x equals 2. So when x is 2, y is going to be x which is 2 squared, 2 squared being 4. And let's do the same for when x is 1. So when x is equal to 1, so if I substitute into this equation here, y is x, which is 1 squared, 1 squared being 1. So I've got two solutions. The first, solutions, first solution rather is when x is 2, corresponding y is 4. And here's the second solution, when x is 1, corresponding y, 1. So this should be the answer to example 3. So that completes this example and that also ends the video sadly. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, a like is very much appreciated. Do plenty of practice related questions and I hope to see you again. Thank you.